Uh, thank you for coming this morning. We have a wonderful, wonderful program for you. And thank you for enjoying the festivities for today. I am Huey Battle, and I have the honor of sharing the Board of Directors of Leadership Fairfax this year. As you know, based on the theme and, and that I'm a baseball fan. I love baseball, and the theme, the theme really gives me a set of adrenaline. My heart starts pumping. So please forgive me if I th throw a char of tobacco in my mouth, <laughs> or if I start doing hand signals and you know just these kinds of things. Uh, it's just part of my love for the game. So this is the 16th year of this awards program, which was instituted to recognize sustained contributions by public sector employees, employees of nonprofits, or appointees to a public board authority or commission. Previous winners of this award have included Kate Hanley, <laughs> Verdi Haywood, Pete Murphy, Marlene Blum, Conrad Egan, Carrie Wilson, the late Ann Rodriguez, Dr. Gloria Adu Ayinzu, Tony Griffin, Walter Alcorn, Captain Willie Bailey, Dean Klein, Bill Bowie, Pat Harrison, and Kevin Greenleaf. So I am delighted that the committee this year uh, has made a recommendation for a 2019 winner. And this year's award is being given to recognize the outstanding contributions of the Honorable Sharon Bulova, Chairman of the Fairfax County. Sharon Bulova is the chairman of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Sharon entered public life in 1984, leaving her role as president of the Kings Park West Civic Association to become a legislative aide to former Audrey Moore, who was then, I guess it was then known as the Annandale District at that time. In 1987, Sharon won her election and this was later redrawn to be the Braddock District, and served in this position until 2008, when she won election to become chairman of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Chairman Bulova, through her work in Fairfax County, has generously and tirelessly dedicated her time, energy, and extensive talents to making Fairfax County government more accessible, transparent, and responsive to its residents. While serving as chairman, Bragg District Supervisor, Annandale District Supervisor, and as a legislative aide to Audrey Moore, Sharon has worked in Fairfax County government, should I say this, a total of 35 years. Uh, during her tenure with Fairfax County, she has had a number of very impressive accomplishments. So I can't do all of them, but I'd like to pick four if she's okay with that. First, she was the founder of the Virginia Rail Express, VRE, which is a commuter rail service that connects Northern Virginia suburbs to Union Station. The service is comprised of two rail stations and it runs during peak hours. Sharon worked tirelessly to advance the concept from a speculative proposal to a reality system. In addition, she has served as a member of the VRE's Operations Board since its inception in 1989. Second, and this one's really important, fiscal stewardship. In 2008, Fairfax County faced a very weakened housing market. This also happened nationally, of course. And we also had something called sequestration, which caused significant cuts to federal spending, which resulted in something that many of us uh, might remember is that we had millions of square feet of office space 
that became vacant in Fairfax County. And what that did was it reduced the revenues that the county had to provide critical services. So through Sharon's steady and collaborative leadership, Fairfax was able to navigate through what has been described as one of the worst economic downturns since the Great Depression. She was able to retain the county's AAA bond rating, and she was also able to keep intact um, while preserving our quality of life and the values that we hold here in Fairfax. Third, she worked on the development of Diversion One, and this is a first. Diversion First, a program that offers alternatives to incarceration for people with mental illness or developmental disabilities. This is folks who come into the criminal justice system for low offenses. The goal is to intercede with this program whenever possible to provide assessment, treatment, and needed support services. Diversion First is designed to prevent repeat encounters with the criminal justice system, to improve public safety, and to promote a healthier community. And what I'll say is this program has been highlighted and has been, become a model for other jurisdictions and is benchmarked as an alter alternative to incarceration. Fourth, she was very instrumental in the extension of the Silver Line. Sharon played an integral role in extending the Silver Line from Tyson's out to Metro and getting it along to Dallas Airport. She's worked alongside many of her dedicated leaders for decades to do that. She and her colleagues were able to successfully obtain the largest transportation infrastructure finance and innovation um, act, which is a TIFIA act um, in loan issued by the federal government to help support this transformative regional project. And as a result, we're seeing a lot of the new development in Tyson's, a lot of new development in Reston along the extents of that Silver Line extension. Personally, I've had the pleasure of working uh, with Chairman Bulova during my 30-year career, and she's just remarkably genuine. She is a dedicated public servant. She uses a deliberative approach uh, to resolve policy issues. Um, she's always looking to seek and accommodate differing views, and she gives individuals the opportunity to engage via the public process. She believes that community engagement is what local government is all about. She enjoys hosting community budget dialogues. <laughs> she enjoys spearheading <laughs> history initiatives. She enjoys working with the Park Authority to offer summer concerts. And she's also big on supporting local events. I'm grateful, we're all grateful in this room for Sharon's leadership over the past 35 years. I appreciate her commitment to making Fairfax a diverse, welcoming, and wonderful community in which to live, work, and play. She has received countless awards, including the Tower of Dulles Award. She's received the Workhouse Arts Founders Award. And she's received the Virginia Transit Association Public Officials Award of the Year. Countless others, but I just wanted to highlight those three. So in summary, Chairman Bulova has truly made a difference in the lives of many here in Fairfax County. And so for the aforementioned reasons, Chairman, Chairman Bulova has been named the Catherine Kate Hanley Service Award recipient for 2019. Now it's my turn. I'm going to tell you some things about Sharon Bulova you don't know. And she maybe didn't want to tell you, but I'm going to. Um, first, there was something uh, when I was the Providence supervisor and she was the Brad uh, Annandale supervisor that she devised that I'm never sure I quite understood, but I always supported it. It was the Bulova tree proffer. Now, that sounds 
self-evident, but it was really a good thing for the environment in Fairfax County because when Sharon had land use cases that came before the board, she insisted, and then we all caught on, that we should be replacing our tree cover, that we should have a tree proffer, and so we all supported the bull of a tree proffer. She also started, was the driving force behind something called Faith in Action. See, I'm really back in history now. Sharon and I go back to when she joined the board that I was on in 1987. That was a long time ago. Jack Herity was chairman when I joined the board, and then we, she joined the board the next year. So we ha she was the driving force behind Faith in Action, recognizing that our faith communities in Fairfax County could come together and partner with the county in the efforts that we were all making to be sure that we provided the things that we needed for those in our community that needed them. And that's important to, it was important to us then and it's important to us today. And then you've heard about, we love trains, the two of us. I think she probably loves VRE a little more than she loves Metro, but I have been pushing that train and so is she to Dulles. And so these are not the kind that go around under your Christmas tree. These are the kind that we try to get to move people around the region. Now here's the real secret, she loved the X-Files. <laughs> How do I know that? Well, the board used to meet on Monday and before we did the budget, we'd have to meet on Sunday night. And I had a devil of a time getting a time on Sunday night that was around the X-Files so the budget chairman could come in and we could finish this up before Monday morning. But let me tell you, when she came, finally we worked around the X-Files, and when she came in, the budget was put together with a lot of, of effort on her part of working with the board members and all the members of the community to get a budget that followed the priorities of the county, the priorities of being sure that we had a sound fiscal basis and that AAA bond rating. Jerry Conley and I have always said we didn't ever want to be the chairman that lost the AAA, AAA bond rating, and Sharon's part of that as well. To be sure that we had the kind of budget that rec represented our priorities, but that also took care of those things that we needed to be sure that we took care of in the county without overburdening the residential taxpayer because of course it is the residential taxpayer that bears the burden in the, in the Fairfax County. And so all those considerations, so I don't begrudge her the X-Files. And finally she keeps running. Now you think a person like me when I'm talking about running means for office. And yeah, she ran in 87, 91, 95, 99, 2003, 2007, 2009, 11, and 15. That's a lot of running. Now, some of you may remember, yes. She never looked at it that way, I don't think. But that's a lot of running. Some opponents, you may remember, sometimes she didn't have opponents. Sometimes she had opponents that I recognized because they'd run before. But she kept running for office to keep her commitment to Fairfax County. Um, and I, but I didn't mean that. I meant the kind of running she does in the morning when she goes out and runs in the neighborhood, where, whichever neighborhood she happens to be in. Now, the effect of that is it keeps her incredibly healthy. But it also means that she hates morning meetings and breakfasts. And so it's a tribute to her that she understands her responsibility enough to come to morning breakfast. And here she is, Sharon, I'm glad you're here so that we can tell you how much we appreciate all you've done for Fairfax County. All right, not, too, not very many people actually surprise me, <laughs> but this is, this is a surprise. Um, let me just say thank you. It's a real honor to be here standing on the stage with Kate Hanley, receiving a Kate Hanley Award uh, here at Leadership Fairfax, one of my absolute favorite organizations in the county. This is the organization that makes Fairfax County feel like a small town. And, uh, and so thank you for the work that Leadership Fairfax does and all of the individuals who have participated over the many years in Leadership Fairfax. It's special. I'll just lastly say um, 
Uh, Rodney and Kate mentioned a number of things um, that I've done, but I have to say, um, I have, you have to work with your colleagues. And over not just a couple of months or even sometimes a couple of years, but sometimes decades in order to get major things done in Fairfax County. And so the continuity, the continuity of leadership and commitment and priorities is absolutely critical for us to be able to do some of the things that we're able to do in Fairfax County. We're special. Um, we have a unique culture. And, uh, and that is because of decades, really, decades, years of continuity of people believing uh, the right things and the right values here in Fairfax County. So thank you so much. This is a real honor, and I truly am surprised. I don't know how, how that happened. <laughs> thank you so much. Where is Chairman Bola? Oh my goodness, that is just incredible. 31 years of service, which is a lot longer than a lot of the age of the ELI kids who are out here right now. That's, that's unbelievable. <laughs> you have done such a wonderful job. You really have. And there are two Bible verses that came to my mind. One was when Jesus said, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. And he must have known what the Board of Supervisors was going to go through back, in, back then. You have done such a good job of focusing on the right things, not letting other things distract you, and keeping the board focused on what's happening here. And the, and the second one is in Proverbs 15, 22, it says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with a multitude of counselors, they succeed. And you've done an excellent job of listening to people and collaborating. And, and indeed, Fairfax County has succeeded under your leadership. So thank you again for what you've done. Now, she's also set the tone for camaraderie. And I don't know if you know this, but she's forced some of the supervisors to get together off hours to make sure that they're getting along. So not just recently, um, Supervisor Faust went to a baseball game to watch Supervisor Cook's son play a game. And Supervisor Faust is there in the stands, and Supervisor Cook was late. It was the second inning. So he's running up to the stands, and, and uh, he says, hey, hey, Faust, what's the score? And Faust, before he can answer, this lady next to him says, guys, guys, they're nine years old. We're, we're playing for fun. This is just for fun, OK, guys? So Faust says, well, in that case, we've had fun eight times, and they've had fun two times. <laughs> it wasn't his district, so he could say whatever he wanted. It was fine. <laughs> and now it's time to introduce the big hitters of the morning. Take it away, Andy. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, may I have your attention and please grab your scorecards and pencils for the announcement of today's starting lineup. For the Leadership Fairfax All-Stars, batting first and playing second base from the Sully Crossroads, Kathy Rainmaker-Smith. Batting second and playing third base from the Springfield Suns, Pat Ace on Base Herity. <laughs> Batting third and today's designated hitter from the Drainsville Dynamos, John Legal Eagle Faust. Batting fourth and playing right field from the Hunter Mill Heroes, Kathy the Hammer Hudgens. <laughs> Batting fifth and playing left field from the Mason Mustangs, Penny the Consultant Gross. <laughs> Batting sixth and playing shortstop, from the Providence Pathfinders, Linda Big Slugger Smith. <laughs> Batting seventh and playing catcher from the Mount Vernon Ospreys, Dan Rail Splitter Stork. <laughs> yeah. 
Batting eighth and playing first base from the Braddock Bucks, John the Champion Cook. Batting ninth and playing center field from the Lee Telegraphs, Jeff Batter Up McKay. Yeah. Your starting pitcher today, your Kate Hanley Public Service Award winner, representing the Fairfax County Dialogues, Sharon the <laughs> Chairman <laughs> Boulevard. So, okay, I, I'm crazy. Well, okay, so now, <laughs> she, she, I'm crazy. Did you see the way Cook came up here? I mean, my goodness, was, Dan Stork just won a sprint right across. That was uh, amazing. So now we are going to throw out um, the ceremonial first pitch. Chairman Bolva is going to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Mr. Kincaid is our uh, catcher here. <laughs> And we have our umpire, Mr. Mark Ingrao. Hold on, let, let him get his mask on. Okay. It's a softball. It's a softball. Very soft. There we go. <laughs> so you may have your seats. Thank you all for being here today. Now, in your program, it says that Chairman Bulova is going to give a state of the county um, speech. We were not, neither one of us were prepared for that. So Chairman Bulova, can you give us the state of the county? The state of the county is awesome. <laughs> there you go. So now, some of you have been here before, so here's how this works. These wonderful people up here do a really good job of staying on time for the most part. So just in case, we have our hostess with the mostest, Lori Swift in the back, and she has her time card. When it meets, reaches one minute, it'll say that. When they have 30 seconds left, it'll say that. And when the time's up, it'll say that. And then that. <laughs> <laughs> and if they go beyond that, you might have seen this in baseball games before. We have the pie, the shaving cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of them want to get to that point. I don't know. That's a challenge. <laughs> so this is how we're going to do this. We have our official umpire, Mr. Mark Ingrao, who actually is in the Softball Hall of Fame as an umpire. And if civil discourse isn't what they want to do and they want to wrestle, he is also is in the Wrestling Hall of Fame as a referee. Is that true? That's so here's how this is going to work. We're going to start with, actually, I think this year we're going to start with Supervisor McKay to answer the first question. And he is going to, the, each one of them is going to have the, the opportunity to ask this question or to answer this question in just one minute to introduce themselves of some great thing that happens to them at a sporting event or some, their best memory or a great story around a sporting event, preferably baseball, but if, if it's something else, that's fine. And after they do their story, they're going to sign their baseball and throw it out to the audience. And our umpire is going to make a call of some type as to what he thought either about the story or the throw or both. <laughs> so Supervisor McKay, we will start with you. Okay, thank you. First of all, this Nats hat is not just a Nats hat, it's my Little League coach's hat, and we know Little League is where it's all at, right? Um, and so my story comes from Little League, playing in Woodlawn Little League by Fort Belvoir, and I'll never forget one old day. Uh, we all had our stark white baseball pants on, and we're looking good for picture day and opening day. And a couple of friends of mine uh, decided to walk next door where the cattails were and see if we could find some, some fish. 
And so we walked down, stepped in that great Fairfax County marine clay, and my first foot sunk down. I pulled my leg up, my cleat was gone. I tried to step forward to get out of it, I slipped. Next thing you know, I'm waist high in mud. And this was before the game even started and before pictures were taken. So that year in my Little League picture is me in a sweatsuit, not in uniform, because my mom was home trying to watch it in time for the game. So lesson learned, don't step in quicksand and marine clay on picture day. <laughs> Very good. Hey, you got it? So this is going to be some valuable swag y'all are getting today. Signed baseballs from the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. And let's see what kind of arm Supervisor McKay has. They are, don't worry, they're not that heavy. No, they're not. Whoa! <laughs> and our umpire says? <laughs> Excellent. Supervisor Cook, sorry you were late to your son's baseball game in that story, but that's still... They were winning, so it was okay. I'm, I may be late, late to board meetings, but never a baseball game. So, um, I just want to point out that we were asked to wear baseball garb, and some of us follow directions and some don't. So, I, you know, so I'm just going to say that. But, so, um, so we were asked to find some uh, f first sporting event or some other thing. So I thought I'd tell you about the first Major League Baseball game that I went to, uh, which turned out not to happen. But... Um, we got, we got tickets uh, to Shea Stadium because the Yankee, Yankee Stadium was, yes, Danny, Yankee Stadium was being um, renovated in 1975. And so we got tickets for Shea, and we drove up about a four-hour drive down from the mountains and went down there on a, on a Sunday that looked a lot like today, drove down in the rain because we had tickets. Uh, and we stood outside because they didn't open the stadium. Uh, and finally, the game was called and rained out, so we never got inside. Um, but we did get to stand uh, outside, and, and as the players exited, everyone sort of went around the player exit. So we did get to see some players. But the other thing that I remember about that day is, you know, we were in the car for eight hours, and you have the radio on, and back then there weren't a lot of radio stations, and you know how radio stations just play the same song over and over again. So uh, there was, uh, and it's whatever song is hot at the time, and so, uh, my brain indelibly has this song associated with my first um, baseball game, and if you are over 50, you recognize it. And if you're not over 50, you really need to um, go to YouTube because the video will tell you everything you need to know about the 70s. Um, and for some reason, this isn't working. It worked last night. Um, hey, Andy, can you sing it? Very disappointed. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Come on. Yeah. Sing, sing it. It's not working. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> so, um, now you can't hear it. Oh, I'm sorry because that was going to be really funny, but it's. <laughs> it, the song is Do the Hustle. Uh, it literally played 10 times, I'm sure, on the trip down and back. And, um, <laughs> and they're holding the pie. <laughs> oh, the time is up. Um, but you need to watch the video. Uh, and you got to sign your ball. So here we go. Please duck if you're out of the audience. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> If uh, anybody who's on the uh, Leadership Fairfax Board of Directors, we have insurance paid up, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Your, Supervisor Stork. <laughs> you forgot Sorry, me. Sorry, our umpire. You're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for that, Supervisor Cook, for using illegal equipment, or trying to, that's a foul ball, and you get to sign another one. Try it again. <laughs> Supervisor Stork, please proceed. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> well, my, uh, my story is a little different. Anybody who's... Uh, there we go. Thank you. Anybody who's familiar with the, the name Bill Buckner and the sixth game of the World Series? Yeah, I know. I, I, I actually was there. Um, 
I was there, I was taken by an ardent uh, Mets fan, and we were sitting there, and we're near the end of the game, and the Mets are losing, and of course, the infamous uh, ball between the legs happens, and, um, but before that, there were all these Mets fans that were streaming out of the stadium, and my friend gets up just ranting and railing at these people who are just giving up on the team already, and at that moment, obviously, the ball goes between uh, Bill Buckner's legs, and the, and the game goes on, and the Mets end up winning that, and ultimately, winning the seventh game and winning the World Series, so the curse of the Bambino continued. <laughs> Has been broken, so. <laughs> <laughs> Was anybody else in this room at that game? Were you? Oh, oh look, at, oh, really, wow. Oh, good. One of the most famous games of all time. Here we go. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> that she was at the game. Uh, oh. Oh, she's. Sh oh. Uh oh. Home run, right? Home run? No, that's a foul ball. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Smith. Well, good morning, everyone. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm a Cardinals fan. Grew up in St. Louis. If you grow up in St. Louis, you are a Cardinal fan for life. There's just no other way you can survive in St. Louis. So I have lots of memory of ball games. My father was a big fan, so we went to ball games from little on. But one of my favorite memories of ball games actually was when I was in high school. The Cardinals were smart. They liked to bring their fans along early on, get them going in their right direction. So when I was in high school, the Cardinals started this program, which was, if you make the A honor roll, they will give you free tickets. Two tickets to three games. It encouraged a lot of people to work hard for their grades. And I got tickets, so it was great fun. Nosebleed seats, upper deck, middle of the week, and probably not the greatest teams for pulling in fans. But it was great. Kids got a chance to go to the ball game and become Cardinal fans for life. Thank you. That is great. Here we, here we go. Let's see. All right. This is practicing up for Little League opening day tomorrow. Oh, so good. Gently. Oh. <laughs> Casey, that's a clean single. Nice. <laughs> County executive was ready for it. I don't know. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Chairman Boulevard. Sort of. So um, actually, the best uh, sports uh, activity I've, I've ever seen is the Fairfax County World Police and Fire Games in 2015. The women's basketball uh, team against the LA basketball team, we won. It was an absolutely amazing game. Um, but my earliest memory uh, was when I think I was probably about maybe five or six years old growing up in Baltimore. Um, and I was playing in the sand behind the um, uh, fence uh, for a basketball or a, a baseball game. And all of a sudden, my sister and I were playing together. I felt this incredible. Uh, um, feeling on, on my shoulder, and uh, I didn't know it, but the uh, batter had hit a fly ball, it had gone above the fence, it came down, hit me on the shoulder, and I looked around, I didn't know what had happened, and I looked at my little sister, she was only, you know, about five years old, and I thought, how did she get so strong? <laughs> and I <laughs> stood up and I socked her. <laughs> That was my earliest memory and the beginning of a fear of balls. Uh, Mr. Umpire, we need another ball up here. I got it right Thank here. Thank you. So after you heard that story, who wants to catch this one? <laughs> Can I sign it, Sharon? Oh, do I have to sign it first? You guys were on top of that. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. Madam Chair, that's a home run. <laughs> if that isn't pandering, oh my goodness gracious. 
I was going to call infield fly rule, but okay. <laughs> Supervisor Gross. Thank you. Um, I think it was in 1955. Uh, the, Do the Dodgers were still in Brooklyn, and I remember listening to the game, the World Series games, on the radio while my father washed the car. That's my earliest memory. But in 1969, um, I had just started dating my, who, the man who became my husband, and I invited him. I knew he was a great Dodger fan. I invited him to go to opening day with the senators at RFK. I think that may have sealed the deal. We, <laughs> in September, we will have been married 49 years. Awesome. <laughs> I, I didn't grow up under Title IX, so this is going to be a toughie. <laughs> Scott Herrick, I'm going to try and get this to you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very good. Go, girl. <laughs> For 49 years, that's another home run. <laughs> well, my uh, sports experiences were not that great. But I first started out in college going to football games. My mom thought it was because I was enjoying football. But instead, I was enjoying other people. <laughs> so as I got married, I married some guy, guy that really, really, really loved baseball. And he invested uh, in those tickets at that game that they play in Washington with that team. <laughs> and we, st after many years of enjoying the tickets, we decided, well, you know what? That team can't change their name. So we'll get rid of that. And I made him happy by getting baseball tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, All right. And I don't have a real good arm here. Okay. <laughs> well, neither one of us grew up with Title Line. That's all right. Is that the excuse? Uh, yeah, title Line. It's a reason. It's a reason. Okay. reason. Okay. Title Line was really important for young women today. Okay. You want me to talk about that? <laughs> this isn't on the script. I don't I know. know it's, okay. <laughs> oh! oh! <laughs> This is a really good idea. <laughs> Our umpire says. Pretty obvious. Hit by a pitch. <laughs> Supervisor Faust. Okay. So next year it's going to be water balloons. I hope. You're <laughs> okay. So I, uh, I have a lot of really great memories uh, of baseball. I love watching baseball. I love playing baseball. But uh, my recollection of the directions I was given was to tell you about my first memory of baseball. And so it, it is not as good as other memories I have. I was uh, probably about six years old, and I was a very, uh, at that point in time, not a good baseball player. Uh, I'd made it through the season pretty much without ever getting into a game. Uh, it was about nine, nine, to nine years old to six years old, and I was the youngest. So... Last game, we're up by an enormous number of runs. We got this monster pitcher who went on to be a superstar at Penn State football uh, who has a no-hitter going into the seventh inning, the last inning. And they decided to give Faust a break and let him play one inning of baseball that season. They put me in, and darn if the guy doesn't hit the ball to left field where I'm standing. I hold on my glove, don't move an inch. The ball drops in front of me. They declare it a hit. <laughs> so I ruined, I ruined Eddie's no-hitter. Story doesn't end there. Next day, we're celebrating at, the, uh, at a swimming pool, and uh, I practically drowned. They pull me out, unconscious, unconscious. They re uh, I revive, and my, I think for the rest of my life, I think Eddie would have gone to prison. They would have assumed that he drowned me on purpose <laughs> if I hadn't survived that. But anyway, that's my first memory of baseball. <laughs> Oh, oh, wow. oh, oh. 
That was a good throw, but the story was a bench-clearing brawl. <laughs> Ready? All You're right, so I, uh, I grew up playing and coaching a lot of sports, but probably the most impactful uh, sporting event of my life uh, was April 3rd, 1988. Uh, I, I'd never played hockey, never been to a hockey game, but ended up going with some, some folks from work uh, to a Capitals-Penguins game up at the old Cap Center in Largo, Maryland. Uh, that game ended up, uh, I ended up having my first, and we always call it our, our first unofficial date with my wife now of 30 years. Um, ended up uh, developing a love of hockey, a, a game that I've gone on to coach and now play with my son. But that, uh, that kind of hockey game changed my, uh, my, my, my future in a lot of different ways. So um, that's it for me. And I'm going to see uh -oh. who I can hit here. <laughs> oh. well, I was aiming for Dr. Hazel, but I, I came up just short. Casey, that's a triple. That's a triple. Very nice. Very nice. Do we have a doctor that does rotator cuff surgery? <laughs> okay, Supervisor Smith. Okay, so I grew up with three brothers. There were a lot of sports on TV, but I was instructed when I first ran for political office to answer the question you wanted to be asked. So, um, 19, 1986, it's funny, Dan Stork mentioned the Mets. That was the year of the Miracle Mets. Well, Sunday, October 19th, I go into labor. And so my husband and I go to the hospital. I'm in the room. Women know the husband's supposed to coach you on Lamaze. Well, my husband noticed a TV in the room. The Miracle Mets were on TV. He was watching the game, and I'm there trying to breathe partnerless. So I don't know about my baseball memories, but it was a memory. Of, uh, <laughs> he still talks about that, Miracle Mets. <laughs> Good pitch hitter. Pinch hitter. Oh, pinch hitter. Pinch hitter. <coughs> pinch hitter. Pinch. Pinch hitter. I'm with you. Substitute. I'm with you. Do you know baseball? I, I just wasn't oh, expecting that one. I, I, know, I, I know baseball, but I, that wasn't what I was thinking of. Thank you, Mr. Mark and Grayo, for, for doing it. <laughs> okay, so we are um, going to be very tight on time now. Miss, we, we said two minute answer. So, Monica Schmoody, our title sponsor, Sigma, thank you very much for doing that. No, you don't have to throw the ball at me, please. So pick a question, one through nine. Lucky seven. And lucky seven is Supervisor John Cook. Supervisor Cook, what is the WIND network, and how is it going to improve the lives of those with developmental disabilities? So WIN stands for Welcoming Inclusion Network, and it is a community-based uh, group that um, the CSB helped us pull together about a year ago, and I was, I was asked to, to co-chair that. Um, when the state a couple years ago changed its definition of, of uh, developmental in and intellectual disabilities to bring all those folks into one group, that gave us the opportunity to have our adult and, and uh, employment services uh, reach out to a broader population, but of course, there wasn't any extra money attached to that. And so the challenge was how do we serve, right, how do we serve that greater population with the same funds we had? And so uh, we, we thought, the board thought that, uh, that we ought to have community input for that. So over the last year, we've had uh, a number of meetings and probably somewhere between 50 and 75 community people who consistently came out, employers, family members uh, and people with disabilities themselves who use the services to help pull together a series of recommendations for the board. And I think what we have coming out of that is um, a, a great set of uh, proposals um, for helping people with developmental disabilities be able to be part of society going forward, to learn social skills, to be able to get job training, to be able to have jobs, to contribute to the community, which is what people want to do, and to maximize their ability to enjoy life and to give back to the community as well. But it would not have been possible without great uh, community input, and so I really appreciate all the people that came out for 
uh, a number of meetings over the series of, uh, of a year and put together a great program that is, is not only the best in Virginia, but probably a, 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 a nationally ranked, I think, program for helping people with disabilities that we're very proud of. Where is Brian Mundy's? Oh, there he is, our annual spend, former board chair. Any number but seven, Mr. Mundy? Number six, that is Supervisor Stork. So Supervisor Stork, Embark Richmond Highway is an initiative focused on creating the multimodal future for the Richmond Highway corridor. And at one end you have Amazon, and on the other end is Fort Belvoir. So how do you think that these two players will have an impact on the revitalization of Route 1? I, I think I first have to say uh, thank you to this board for their prescience in understanding that redevelopment of a, of a need area can make a huge impact on all of us. And that starts with the 2014 DRPT study, which identified we need to put model model transportation down Richmond Highway. This board supported that. The, the board's willingness to invest in the community for a long time. I'm going to particularly want to thank Sharon for her engagement and involvement and frankly the core difference that she made in our community. But when you have one end of, of Richmond Highway, Route 1, at Amazon and one end at Fort Belvoir, you have huge major employers. They have, if you will, massive armies of their own that they have and, and are real huge drivers for the community. And putting um, multimodal transportation, putting bus rapid transit, putting Autumn Lee Metro, putting, you know, widening the highway, doing all these other things is, and it's really spending more than a billion dollars, investing more than a billion dollars in a community is going to pay and is paying huge dividends. And Amazon is a key, the next step of that process, but it clearly isn't the only next step of that process. And so I'm deeply appreciative of the folks on this board, uh, their look and their willingness to invest in our community and frankly make the long-term difference which you are making. So again, my deep appreciation to all of them and, and uh, come take a look. Uh, things have changed pretty dramatically and, and more to come. Thank you. All right, Sheriff Kincaid, I'm calling you out. In, 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 oh, one, you were right on it. Okay, there we go. So, Supervisor Kathy Smith. So this is interesting. You're, you're part of a team that's been working on updating the Fairfax County Zoning Ordinance. What are some of the more interesting and perhaps entertaining changes you have made to have had to address here? So we've done things with the Zoning Ordinance allowing trampoline facilities. We worked on, now say this three times fast, rear yard coverage. It took me a while to be able to say that and not stumble. But I think um, it was a little controversial, but the board had a student come speak to us. She wanted a hedgehog for a pet. How many people realized it used to be illegal to have a hedgehog in Fairfax County? And, 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 and if you wanted a chinchilla in Fairfax County, you had to get a special permit that cost about $460. There used to be a former supervisor that had one in his office, but we won't say any names. And so the board went through a process to do this, and, and you gain this knowledge that you didn't have before you got in the board. And I remember when we were in the process getting forward to this ordinance that I was talking to my neighbor across the street, and both of her dogs died within a couple of weeks each, of each other. And then she told me, and the chinchilla died too. And the first thought in my head was, oh my God, you had an illegal pet. Thank, <laughs> thank the Lord that didn't come out of my mouth, right? And so the board went on. You can now have chinchillas and hedgehogs, but please, if you get a hedgehog, watch out how to take care of it. Don't kiss it. And they can be lovable pets, too. Thanks. We have some great advice we have. Monica Schmoody telling us how to be healthy, and you say don't kiss a hedgehog. That's, that's both ends of the spectrum there, right? Is, is, that, is that a fair statement about the hedgehog? Yes, okay. Okay, so now I see that, um, actually, you know what? We have the county executive right here, Mr. Hill. Anything but one, six, or seven? Number nine. Oh, we have Supervisor Hudgens. Now remember, <laughs> you are not running for office again, so you can say whatever you want. <laughs> what is the, one of the essential things that Fairfax County needs to do to be an open, welcoming, and successful community? In order 
for us to be a welcoming community is so we have already done the hard work, and it's the one Fairfax. And I think by uh, establishing the one Fairfax, we have actually walked away from the challenges that we've had that allowed folks to believe that it wasn't a very welcoming place. And that was done years ago when uh, we had a really bad study that said so. And so from that, we made good of that. And we now have an equitable lens through which you look at all of the policies that we make and how we determine that we are serving our community well. So, for example, we look at all elements and make decisions based on actually are we really treating everyone equitably. And the policy writing of that has been really successful for us. And I think it puts Fairfax County in a different place than others. And uh, we are uh, looking at one Fairfax when we say all children, all adults, all policies, all the things that we do. And the history that we had has been wiped, I think, in a direction that shows that we really are a leading county when you think about how we make our policy decisions, looking with an intentional air to make sure that we have social and racial policy that is balanced to fall. Thank you. Thank you. All right, my friend Brian Jackson, since middle school, with Booz Allen Hamilton. Some of you know what's coming. Um, Question number three or question number eight? Eight. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. We're going with question number three. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Gross. <laughs> so the Board of Supervisors is about to experience its biggest change since 1991 when we added the Sully District. And when Chairman Bolivar retires, you will be the longest serving member on this board. That's assuming I get reelected. <laughs> We're assuming. You'll be the adult in charge if you stay. So, <laughs> how do you think this board, the, the, the new board, could affect the future of this county? Well, thank you. Um, the new board will need some adult supervision. And, uh, and I look forward to mentoring and onboarding the new members, just as I was mentored by Kay Hanley and Sharon Bulova when I was the newbie in 1996. As board members, we make decisions that affect every, people's everyday lives more than they ever thought of making across the river. We draw from life experiences in making those decisions. This year's candidates are planning commissioners, school board members, economic development experts, and social activists. But it is our ethnically, demographically, and socially diverse community uh, that is important that our decision makers recognize and understand the need to be broad and open as possible in making decisions that not only affect today, but establish pathways for decades in the future. As a member of the Board of Supervisors, I think we need to put aside the I and focus on the we. A favorite quote these days is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Using your baseball theme today, the Board of Supervisors is a team. Some team members are veterans, some are rookies. Sometimes there are strikeouts and occasionally a home run. Most of the time, though, it's getting from base to base, playing both defense and offense in an effort to get to the goal, which is good decisions for our county and our constituents and good government. And I'm just going to choose this one for Supervisor Faust. So, Go Virginia is an initiative. This is a kind of long one, so excuse me for this one. Um, Go Virginia is an initiative to foster private sector growth and job creation through state incentives, regional collaboration by businesses, education, and government. We are Region 7, which includes the city of Alexandria, Loudoun, Arlington, and Prince William counties. And there's a lot of money available for collaboration within the region, and even more if there's cooperation with other regions. 
what are, what are some ideas that are being floated within the region and which regions are we most likely uh, to collaborate with? Okay, thank you. Um, the Go Virginia initiative uh, was adopted at the state level and is designed very much to require uh, regional cooperation and inter-regional cooperation. The, kind of the state is divided into nine regions and as was uh, stated, we're in with Arlington, Loudoun and other uh, municipalities in our area. Uh, so there are uh, quite a, there's a lot of money at stake, a lot of grants that are available for uh, economic development projects uh, on the intra-regional side, which, you know, would be Loudoun and so forth. Uh, this year alone, there's $5.3 million available uh, for what we call per capita awards. So what you need is a, a good idea to submit to the state, and you need to be willing, able, whoever is presenting the, uh, the application, to match 50%. So what are they looking for? Mostly in this region, we're looking for workforce development opportunities. We're working a lot with Northern Virginia Community College, uh, George Mason University, uh, and others. Uh, the, the, the business leadership in the, this area has identified that as our number one concern. We have the jobs, we need to find ways to train them. So we're doing that. And then on the interregional, to my knowledge, there's yet to be one grant issued because it's very difficult to work, you know, with, it's difficult enough working with your neighbors, but to work across state on a, uh, on a project that will uh, result in economic development in both regions is difficult. But there's over $22 million available uh, for competitive grants where interregionally you compete for the money at the state level. Uh, I think uh, their focus primarily, again, is on workforce development, but also uh, creating this, uh, the state wants to create in these regions a, uh, uh, a, 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 an ecosystem that supports entrepreneurs and startup companies. So if you have ideas on how we could uh, do that here and work with other jurisdictions, uh, let us know. Uh, the, uh, the grant opportunities come available a couple times a year. So, thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Faust. <laughs> so it's time for our speed round question. We're going to start with Supervisor McKay and come straight down the line here. What is your favorite, it's got to be quick, everybody knows, what is your favorite ballpark food? Beer. <laughs> <laughs> Second choice, uh, na Nationals Park Italian sausages. Well, since I was already picked once, I'll have to pick it twice. Two beers. <laughs> <laughs> That's in Philadelphia. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I got the chance to eat up at the Stadium Club in St. Louis. That's the place to go. Great buffet, wonderful desserts, and an ice cream sundae bar. <laughs> Hot dogs. Hot dogs always taste better with a ball game in front of them. I'm low. I do peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Italian sausage with peppers and onions. I still like beer. <laughs> Italian sausage with onions and peppers and two beers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent job. So now it's time for our seventh inning stretch. And here to lead us is, uh, well, our version of Harry Carey, Mr. Andy Siegel. All right, and unlike Hall of Fame broadcaster Harry Carey, I have not had a 12-pack of beer by the seventh <laughs> inning, but I will do my best to channel my best Harry Carey for the next couple of minutes. So, everybody on your feet! Come on, everybody! Let me hear ya! A one, a two, a three! Take me out to the ball game! Take me out to the crowds. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. I don't care if I ever get back for its root. Root, root for the county. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes are out at the old ball game. Hey, hey! Back over to you, Casey. Okay. Oh, that was good. 
So where is the ANOVA table? Oh, I see Stacy and Jen over there. All right, so Stacy and Jen, you all have a choice here. You can uh, get number eight or number five. Number eight, that is super, you're, no, you're gonna be okay. You're, you're not Brian Jackson, you're right. So, <laughs> we go way back, it's all right. So this is for Supervisor Herity. Um, there have been a, there's been a lot of coverage, unfortunately, in the papers about the growing opioid problems in the D.C. area. In Virginia, I guess they're holding steady at about four deaths a day or something like that. It's some crazy number. I know you have worked in leadership at Fairfax and been a leader to fight against the opioid uh, public health crisis in Fairfax County. How, how are we doing? Well, well, Casey, you're right. I think things uh, across the river have gotten really bad with the opioids. Here in Virginia, we're, we're holding it about four deaths a day, which is really not, uh, not a good thing. But there's some good news in Fairfax County. Uh, if you look at the, three, the, the numbers for the first three quarters last year, and it's, it's amazing. We still don't have numbers, which is a forensics issue, which is something you'll be hearing more from me on later. Um, we're down 40% in our deaths from 2017 to 2018, and uh, I think a lot of that's due to the, the work this board and, and this group and, and uh, this county has been doing to fight the epidemic. Hospital overdoses are down, um, but it's still a problem, and what the, the real issue here is we don't know how much of those numbers is being masked by our, our efforts to get naloxone out into the community. Um, so, which can, which is the opioid reversing thing that in CSB has been great, uh, as well as some nonprofits are getting that out into our community. I'd caution that the, uh, you know, that those numbers are probably a little bit mass. We got a lot of work to do, and we need to keep doing it. Um, you know, we've been working on this at the board, and I've been proud to lead the effort on the board over the last four years to address the issue. Um, a couple of the recent things that we've done is we now have drug take back boxes in each of our police station based on a pilot that was successfully done at the West Springfield Police Station. Um, the board approved 2.6 million in funding to give our police additional resources, education, awareness, and some, some training. We now have a great group uh, over at George Mason, Dr. Hazel's leading an effort there to, to kind of address this effort on a little bit more of a regionalized basis. We've got drug counselors back in our schools. Um, thanks to the sheriff, we finally have a, a opioid program in our jails. Um, and again, we still have a, a ways to go. I think the biggest needs that are still out there are, are treatment, because we've got a lot of people that have been impacted and we really don't have enough treatment centers. Um, and the continued education of, the, of our residents. Uh, every HOA meeting, every chance I get, I talk about it, because it really starts with you all. Uh, most of this happens to a lot of good people. It starts with prescription drugs. If you know anybody who's taking opioids, keep an eye out for them. Friends, family, um, make sure they don't go down the wrong path and get them out of your, uh, get them out of your uh, medicine cabinets. Thank you very much. So in the interest of time, I'm going to ask the next two uh, supervisors and Ch Chairman Bolova to um, be as quick as you can. I want, I want to cut you too short here, but because you are a short timer. But um, so, <laughs> so Chairman Bulova, we'll start with you and, and um, then Supervisor McKay, if you could chip in on this one. Um, we hear all these groups such as Pro Growth, No Growth, Smart Growth, NIMBY, Banana, build absolutely nothing near anybody. Um, what is the strategy and the philosophy behind the approach Fairfax County takes uh, with uh, regard to growth and development? So uh, there is a strategy behind uh, how we grow and how we manage growth. Um, first of all, uh, we make sure that we are supporting our stable residential communities. Uh, we target growth and development in areas where if left alone, they could deteriorate. Uh, areas that, uh, that really are in need of revitalization. For instance, um, the, the uh, mosaic uh, at Mirafield, which had previously been, uh, and there are still some places where, uh, where you have older, tired um, uh, commercial and industrial uses. Uh, Richmond Highway, uh, some of Richmond Highway looks the same as it did when I was a young bride moving into the county uh, during the Vietnam War. <laughs> and those uses are still there, and places like Tyson's. 
uh, where uh, Tyson's was a successful and is a successful commercial sector of the, uh, of the county, but uh, it has been a sea of asphalt uh, parking at surface parking lots uh, and, uh, and originally devoid of residential and essentially revitalization uh, will provide uh, life and uh, vitality into Tyson's. It will also, when built out, Tyson's will, uh, will have storm water runoff that is equivalent to a forested area. And so being able to revitalize also uh, takes care of the environment as well. And Supervisor McKay, you've represented district, district with a couple of redevelopment areas yourself. So how do you think progress has been made and how will it affect the emerging areas that we're seeing right now? Uh, I think we've made tremendous progress. You know, I think when it comes to revitalization, you need three key things. One is you need a good plan, uh, which we've done a good job in the county, as Sharon alluded to, rewriting comprehensive plans to steer growth into areas that need it, that want it, that have to make environmental improvements. The second is you need resources and infrastructure, and where you put infrastructure can steer growth in the future. And the last is you need the political willpower uh, to make sure that it happens. And we've been very successful. In my district, I have Central Springfield and the Route 1 corridor. And in Central Springfield, we've transformed the old Springfield Mall from a valueless property into the third most valuable property in all of Fairfax County. Across the street from that, the TSA headquarters is being built, which is the second largest office building currently under construction in all of Fairfax County. Uh, and on the Route 1 corridor, as was acknowledged before, Fort Belvoir is Fairfax County's largest employer, uh, and we're in the brink of investing a billion dollars in transit infrastructure along the highway. What these places have in common is a desire to improve, uh, an investment of infrastructure in metro and transit, and we need to make environmental improvements in that area. Sharon acknowledged these were areas largely paved over that need to be retrofitted to be better for the environment. So it could be a real win-win, but you gotta have the political courage to do it, the plan, and the public's gotta put money into the infrastructure. We get way more than our return on that investment as these areas are proving. Thank you. And yes, yeah, please. And Supervisor Linda Smith, so um, I know that your pre project is Maryfield, and there's a lot of always fun things going on there. Can you just kind of give us an update on some things that have happened and maybe that are going to happen in the future? Well, let me start off by an example of how does revitalization work and help us. In Maryfield, you may remember the old multiplex theater and seas of asphalt and gang activity. Okay, after we put together a task force back in 1999, 98, 99, a ways back, I was on the original task force, we came up with a plan. And that plan is a community plan that we have been implementing since that time. Okay, when Mosaic was starting out, the assessed value was $38 million. Today, January 1, that value has gone up to over $648 million. Wow. That's what revitalization and economic development can do. So that's the past, but let's look to the future here, and we've got something cool coming up. The county has applied for a grant for an autonomous vehicle pilot project. You all know what autonomous vehicles are, right? So what we are looking at is the possibility of a pilot for running an autonomous vehicle shuttle between the Dunloring Metro Station and Mosaic. We will know more about that grant in May. We are very optimistic about it. It should be exciting. But Maryfield is, looks like it's going to be the poster child for something new, technology and transportation coming here. It's going to be fun. Stay tuned. Thank you. So as Supervisor Gross noted, this is going to potentially be, well, will be the biggest turnover in the board since 91. And I, I just as a little public service announcement, um, it's been over 40 years since we've had a primary for the uh, chairman of the Board of Supervisors. And it's you, if you're a Republican, Democrat, Independent, you can vote in the primary. So just make sure you vote. It's very important that you all vote. And um, for the four um, members not seeking re-election, I've asked them to each give two minutes 
to just give their reflections on what their time was in office, what they'll remember most, or what they're going to be glad to be rid of, or whatever they want to say. So we will start with Supervisor Cook, who has been on the board for 10 years. Um, so start with Supervisor Cook there. Thank you, Casey. You said that I could say anything I wanted, which is a dream come true. So, um, <laughs> but I want to be—I want to be, be serious, serious for a minute because I'm very—I'm very concerned about um, the divisions in our society. You know, we talk a lot about that. We are more divided as a country than we've been in 50 years since the 1960s, and and I think that's very problematic. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that, but but one reason is is really a failure of our societal institutions, you know, it's not just government, um, it's a lot of other things. You look at our religious institutions, which are racked by sex scandals, finance scandals, you look at, you know, businesses, which have uh, too many have focused on, you know, the next quarterly financial report so that the business can flip rather than, you know, putting money back into uh, the employees and, 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 and helping people move along. You look at the growing wealth gap, um, where, you know, workers are not sharing in, um, in the wealth that's being created. And the problem with that is you want, you want a gap because it's an incentive, um, but if the gap too, gets too big, if people no longer believe the American dream applies to them, if they can't look at somebody who's doing better and say, I'm gonna work hard to get there, and instead they say, I can't to get there, then they, that turns into resentment. And if you look in countries in the world, Latin America, Africa, other places, with huge wealth gaps, you get social instability because of that. And that can really uh, be very, very damaging. Um, role models, I mean, look at, look at leaders in, in um, entertainment, sports. Uh, what do we see? We see domestic violence. We see sexual assault. We see um, buying your way into college, um, and on and on. So. Um, these, these divisions are reflected in government, and government is a lagging indicator. Government does not create society. Government follows what society does, and the way to, uh, to get the, past these divisions, don't look at us in government. Um, it's up to you. It's up to the community and the leaders in the community, and you are Leadership Fairfax. That's what you do. That's what you've signed up to do, and you have the opportunity to really lead, you know, society and pulling back together and finding those answers. And I, um, I hope you can do that. I think in Fairfax, we're well placed to do that. We do it better than many other people and many other places. But um, it is a serious issue. And um, I look forward to joining you off the stage uh, in that effort. And thank you for your service, Supervisor Cook. And Supervisor Linda Smith. You are up, and you can also say whatever you want. Oh, it's wonderful to have that kind of freedom. I agree with John, but I was thinking back about when I took office, and you have these wonderful ideas of how you're going to help constituents and the things they're going to want you to help them with. January 2nd, my first full day in office, first constituent call we get. A woman wants to know what we're going to do about the dead deer in her front yard. The maggots were setting in. It was getting really nasty and her kids were upset. Somebody's gotta come and take care of this dead deer. Okay, that wasn't what I expected. We made some calls and we finally got somebody to go take care of the dead deer. And of course, then I learned after that that dead deer are easier to take care of than the live deers that run around <laughs> Fairfax County. So, our job really is a matter of, <clears throat> you never know what's going to be the question of the day. It's an endless variety. You can't possibly imagine what will happen. But every district also has its own personality, its own set of characteristic issues. And in Providence, it's land use. It's obvious. Look at the cranes in, in Tyson's, what's happened in Merrifield. I have dealt with everything from the small infill developments with a handful of houses to the corporate headquarters for Fortune 500 companies. It has been really an amazing experience doing that. But it's really about people. People who come together to make the plans for places like Tyson's and Merrifield, and then you see it turned into text, words on a piece of paper, 
then it comes to the entitlement, the commitments, and you actually get to see it happen. That's the really great part about this job. It's the working with the people to get things going, and actually, unlike Congress and other levels of government, you get to help make real things happen that affect people's lives every day. And that's been great. Thank you. Thank you. So 16 years, Supervisor Smith, thank you very much for your service. And now with 20 years on the board, Supervisor Kathy Hudgens. Well, I have spent 20 years really enjoying doing this job. And I came to it from a uh, teaching environment, and I have used it that way. And so one of the things that, all of the things that I think about is to see how we have empowered our community more. And that's the very important part. I talked about one Fairfax before. I, I will recall that when we received this uh, very un, uh, um, uh, tragic report in which um, the uh, county had uh, been providing um, service to brown and black boys in terms of disciplining them and they were going into the courts. And we got this report that said, the court said, you know, we have to do something about this. And it put us on the right track for, I say, the 20 year period, mm. because we changed our policy. We made our policy very intentional to make sure that we treated everyone fairly. Uh, having doing so, we have now set ourselves up that the schools and the county work together on policy making that has to do with all children. And that makes it much me easier to reach the, the goals that you really want, A, for those folks to have a service and how we pay for it, how we support it, and how it makes our county better. Uh, the other thing is that there are a lot of fun things you can do that you don't realize that when you look at the way we deliver services. Um, I used to ask uh, the transportation guy, why is it that there are two yellow buses going down the street every day? And one has the parents on and the other one has the kids in it. And guess what? Today, thousands of kids ride the regular uh, connector bus to go to school. They don't have to be in a yellow bus. Mm -hmm. Think of the cost, but also what we found is that children got liberated. A young uh, girl said to me, I don't have to leave school with the school bus because my mom doesn't have a car and I need, really need to have someone to help me after school. So she now can stay at school and get on any bus that, that the Connecticut bus that takes her back home. Another young kid said, my mom and dad are divorced and they were always debating on who's going to take me from here to there. And I go from Madison to uh, my mother's house when I need to go. I go to uh, Tyson's to d be with dad. It liberated, but it also is teaching children to do other things. I think one of the other things that I want to talk about is that I think in the development that we've been able to do, we really build communities. And we're going to continue, I hope, in that vein, in building communities in a way that we support the family structure and we support the community structure. And that is something that uh, is important, and we need to start thinking about why and how. Uh, in, in modeling that, we can look at what other communities have done. There are places where people put families together in a way that they can support. Uh, if you put a senior facility here, and you put a, a, a facility with uh, children and families on the other side, guess what happens? People start becoming engaged and become that supportive piece that you really need with families and community. And lastly, I want to talk about affordable housing and hope that as the next board comes forward, that they will be pushing the strong values of affordable housing because that's what's going to change for both our business community and our families in Fairfax County.
Thank you, Supervisor Hudgens. I got to the pie. It was coming. And she took me seriously. She can do anything she wants. So the, the pie was getting bigger. She's like, hey, I'm, I'm done. I can do whatever I want. So Chairman Bulova, 31 years, it's all yours. Let me just say I have many, many, many great memories having served in office. Um, one, of, one of my sweetest memories actually had to do with the uh, – uh, Burke Center VRE Garage, which may sound like really wonky, um, except that for the community it was a very big deal. Uh, this was, um, I'm trying to think how many years ago, it was probably I guess around 2000, 2000-ish. 2000, 2000 uh, parking had become a problem. The Burke Center Garage was the most popular in the entire VRE system. People were parking creatively all over the place, including in the neighborhoods, and uh, public works. Uh, county staff designed a brand new parking facility, a, uh, a, a structured parking garage. And, uh, and so I will always remember uh, hosting a community meeting, assuming everyone would be so pleased to see their new garage. And when I looked out into the sea of faces this is what I saw. <laughs> we hate the garage. And uh, what's more, um, I, what I didn't know is that they were also plotting to kill the garage. Uh, never, ever, um, never forget the importance of bringing the community to the table uh, to solve an issue. And, uh, and so something that I will always remember uh, will, is, is inviting the Burke Center and the surrounding community to the table uh, to try to figure out how to design a garage and how to address parking uh, in a way uh, that it was something that the community would embrace. That, that happened in the end. There's a lot more in between uh, to the story. Um, but uh, in the end, that, that was the community's garage, and uh, they uh, shot confetti into the air uh, when we had the, uh, the ribbon cutting. Uh, and it, it wasn't just about the garage, it was about the community. And, um, and that's what local government is all about. I love local government. It's the best place to be. And I thank my constituents and I thank the community for, uh, for helping to make Fairfax County the awesome place that it is to live, to work, and to play. Thank you. So here. I'm going to invite Monica Schmoody and Huey Battle back up here. Um, first, you guys, I mean, I just really, really thank you all, especially the, re, the, the ones who are not seeking re-election, you all do such a good job. And uh, Monica has a, a special presentation, and then we're going to do it. one more little thing to get you guys on your way. Okay, this is quick. A parting gift for all of you. It looks like this. So what we're going to do is this. I would like the six supervisors who are seeking re-election to make their way down to home plate over here. And the four supervisors who are done, can, can you have actually, so you all can, yeah, you all can start walking down while we're doing this. This is for you, this is for you. Are we supposed to take? Yeah, no, no, you all, you all gonna go down. We're gonna get you your shirts. Supervisor Hudgens here, Supervisor Cook here. Audience, be ready. So they're, they're going to hit a walk-off home run, and they're going to be celebrated by their comrades at home plate. Supervisor Hudgens, you can't leave. You can't leave. So we need to set up this photo op. So you all stand up, please. You can't. No, you cannot leave yet, Supervisor Hudgens. You have to come. You have to come over here with these. This group. With this group. Yeah, with your bat. With your bat. Because you, so, Huey, they may need some coaching. So, so, do it, 
So I assume you all know which you bat from the right or the left side. So Supervisor Cook, can you give them an, a, a coaching lesson real quick on how to hold the bat like they're going to hit it? So watch Supervisor Cook, please. You see, so we're all in. We're well, kind of. Are you all coming up this way? Here come the photographers. This is a lot better in rehearsal. So, <laughs> so you're going to stand side, Supervisor Cook. Show them how to the stance. And on three, you're going to swing together and kind of end at the right where the bat hits the ball because you see the ball's already hitting the bat. So, here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, one, two, three. Beautiful. One more time. Ready? Oh, yeah. One, two, three. Now that's a walk-off home run. Now go to home plate, and your 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 fellow supervisors are going to celebrate you as Huey Battle closes us out. Thank you all very very much. Wow, wow, wow. What, isn't that awesome? <laughs> well, special thanks to all the board members. Uh, thanks for being good sports. Thanks for all you've done for the county and all you'll continue to do uh, for the four that are stepping down, you're not going to disappear. Everybody's going to, to look to you and your expertise as we continue the effort of trying to make Fairfax County the best it can be. Thank you all for coming. We really do appreciate your time this morning. Uh, I want to also thank, give special thanks to a couple of folks that were very, uh, very instrumental in the planning of this endeavor. Uh, uh, Devin and Brian, and I think Devin and Brian are around someplace, and if you can give them a quick hand. There's Brian. I'm not sure where Devin is. I want to give special thanks to Karen Cleveland, as Karen, Karen is a star leader of our organization, and special, Kate, special uh, thanks to, to Casey for, again, leading us through a wonderful breakfast and having a, a great sense of humor. And of, of course, Casey, this isn't going to be your last hurrah. We'll bring you back for next year as well. Thanks to our program sponsor, Cigna. And uh, with all that, I hope everybody has a great day. I hope everybody continues to make Fairfax County the best it could possibly be. Thanks a lot, everyone. We'll hope to see you soon.